Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you guys today. It's good to be here. Uh, it's supposed to warm up. It was a little bit chilly yesterday, but I think all this snow will be melted at least by the, t- you know, bef- almost by the time we get out of here. Everything will be gone. I'm excited about that. Uh, I am happy to see some faces returning who've been back. I know there's a few folks dealing with some sicknesses and some other things, and they've been in and out. And this week, some of them are in, and I'm happy to see them. If you're watching at home, if if you're one of the ones that are out today, know we miss you, and we hope things are going well for you. We can't wait to see you back with us very soon. Um, A few, uh, got a bunch of stuff going on today. Before I get to that, um, I would like our ushers to come and, and get ready to take the offering. Um, I always forget to do that. I know it's, it's a, we kind of need your money, and I always forget to ask for it. So, uh, but there's a lot of ways you can give it to us. The first uh, way, if you're here in the building, is to put it in the plate as it goes by. Uh, if you're watching at home or, or you like to give online, you can do that through sc- scanning the code you see on your screens, or if you have the app, you can you can give on the app as well. So, uh, lots of ways to do that. Or if you're old fashioned, you can stick it in the mailbox, and we get it, and we can put it in the offering box here in the building. So, uh, all kinds of ways. Uh, and some of the things that that does is it helps us to pay for our roof that is keeping the snow out and the warmth in, uh, among other things. So. Uh, we have uh, that loan to pay off, and so we, if you'd like to contribute directly to the building fund, you can do so by scanning that code right there, uh, or if you're in the building, you can write that on your envelope or on your check, uh, and we can put that where it needs to go. We have just a couple things coming up that I want you guys to be aware of. Uh, the first, and this is not necessarily affiliated with us, but this Friday, January 20th, at the Granada Theater in Bluefield, there is a, a comedy show by a comedian named Jeff Allen. This is the 2.0 tour. Now, um, I was approached by this. This has been put on by a new entertainment company in our area, the 315 Company. Um, and so they, the, the guy in charge of that is a friend of mine, and he came up and he's like, look, man, I need to sell like 300 tickets to make this thing work. And uh, I've seen a bunch of uh, Mr. Allen's videos on Facebook. Even actually, it was like the day before my friend was like, hey, he's coming to Bluefield. I watched his t- one of his testimonies about how he was saved and how God saved his marriage. And so it's not just comedy. He's going to share the things that God has done. It's, a fa- it's an all ages. It's a family show. Uh, and that is great. It is uh, coming up 7 p.m. He's He's very funny. And so we're, we're blessed to have him come into this area. So it's uh, $35, and then if you for just a regular seat, and if you want the VIP, which I believe includes dinner, that's $50. Um, so all that information you can find there. You can see the, the, we have a poster up, and you can scan the code, and it'll give you some more information as well. Uh, so that's coming up this Friday. And then on Sunday, um, I would like to take a group to Winter Jam in Charleston. Now, if you've, how many of you are familiar with Winter Jam? You just put a hand up. If you're at home, raise your hand. I'll count it, uh, right? Uh, but Winter Jam is a wonderful Christian concert that has been put on for at least 15 years, maybe more than that. Uh, and it's it's comes to Charleston this year. And this is the lineup that we have that you can see on the screen there. It's a lot. Now, typically, uh, you... You go, you pay your $15 at the door, you walk in, uh, but the Charleston Coliseum is not a very large venue, and uh, I mentioned last week, the last two times I have tried to take groups there with previous churches, half of us got in and half of us did not. So if we get 10 people uh, to sign up, then I can go ahead and, and buy the Jam Nation tickets, which are $40, and that gets you guaranteed admission. It also gets you some discounts on merchandise, and there's some other benefits to that as well. Uh, and you get in early. You can get in at 3 p.m. instead of 4 p.m. So, uh, And you get to go to the pre-show and see all the worship acts before all the other stuff. There's some wonderful things. So what I have here is a sign-up sheet. I'm going to set it down uh, next to the uh, Christmas card boxes. You can sign up. If I don't get 10 people, this will not be an official church trip. You'll be on your own. You'll have to go and pay your ticket at the door. But if we get at least 10 people, then I will order the tickets this week. So just know that that's coming up, and I'll set this out there uh, in just a little bit. And that is Sunday the 22nd. And so uh, 
again, if you have questions about that or, or want to know any more, just let me know. And then the final thing I need to uh, make known is next, or excuse me, a couple Sundays from now, January 29th, uh, is a busy day for us. We'll have our all music service uh, in the morning. You can, uh, there is a sign up or, or a voting list of some of the songs that we've done. We're going to do greatest hits of 2022, uh, Landmark's greatest hits. We're not taking any suggestions for new songs this particular time. So there's a list. If you look through it and you pick your three favorites from that list and whichever ones get the most votes, those are the ones we'll do. Uh, but then after our all music service, uh, we get to serve at Amy's House of Hope. This will be our first time moving from Tuesday evenings to a Sunday, and so we're really excited how that's going to play out. We'll be cooking here uh, at, the, at the building in the afternoons, and then the actual serving at Amy's House is from 5 to 7 p.m. So if you have any questions about that, please see Christina Cartwright or Lauren Valentine, and they can answer all those for you. I don't know if we still need anything. There's our box is overflowing with food donations, so we thank you for those who gave this month. Uh, be on the lookout for uh, stuff in the months to come. I think that's all I have for us. I think I hit all of the things. Oh, uh, make sure you get your Christmas cards so we can put those boxes away uh, by next week. So I think that's it. Let's pray together. God, we thank you so much for today. And we thank you for the opportunities that we have to come and to, to worship together, to serve together, the opportunities we have to, um, to serve our community at Amy's house, opportunities we have to uh, even just to, to hear some clean entertainment. God, entertainers like comedians and, and musicians who are in it for you. God, there's so much stuff that this world puts uh, aims at us from social media and traditional media outlets and movies and TV shows and so much of it just is not glorifying you. And so we thank you for the opportunities that are coming our way to, to laugh and to, to sing and to, to worship in a way that makes you proud. We thank you for that. We pray for this service that you'd be over each and every aspect of it. Speak to us through the music, through the sermons, and even just in our hearts. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Worship team, you can start finding your way up onto the stage. Um, we're going to start off with a song story today. I was recently asked to write a statement of belief, so I guess that's why it is like first and foremost on my mind. So there's this great quote that says, show me a church's songs and I'll show you their theology. Um, I think there's a lot of truth to that. And so that's why I tend to be picky about the songs that we do here at Landmark. And I don't say yes to everyone's suggestions. Um, sorry, not sorry. Um, but I think it's important to have songs that tell you about who God is and to praise his name and to instruct believers in their faith and um if there are songs that have direct scripture quotes, I get super excited. Or, um, so in 2016, the song We Believe was written, and then it was made even more famous by a little band called the Newsboys when they recorded it. So the chorus of We Believe is in part the Apostles' Creed. Maybe that kind of sounds familiar. We all this stuff. It's a statement of faith that the Christians have used since the second century. We live in a society that is pretty much screaming at us constantly and telling us whether, you know, what we should believe, you know, whether it's true or not, you know, just kind of fall in line. But we really need to know what we believe. And I love that this song helps teach it to us. And so I pray that today the words of the song would sink down into your heart and they would be an anchor for your faith today. Um, and that your faith in Jesus will help hold you steady when times get tough when things look uncertain, you can hold on to this. This is what we believe. Would you stand and let's sing together.
Lord, help us to keep in mind that you are high and you are holy. And God, <laughs> there's no one like you. God, we can trust you with our, with our problems, with our situations. We can trust you with our whole lives, God. We thank you for all that you've done for us. And Lord, I pray that you would open our hearts and minds to what you want to continue to say to us through this service. Um, Lord, I just pray that you would bless everything that happens in this service from here on out. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, you may be seated if you aren't already. And now we dismiss our children to Children's Church. And if you haven't had a chance to greet some people, say hi to someone around you. And uh, we'll see you in three minutes. Um, so, if you know me, you know I hate public speaking. Oh my word, it's horrible. But what happened this week was really interesting. Um, I was praying, I was like, God, what song can I do that will really minister to people? And I just knew that I was supposed to do this song about turning loose of your worries and, and giving them to God. But it was on an old cassette that's getting ready to die. And we had to transfer it to MP3. And then I wanted to change the key because I used to sing a lot higher. Anyway, so um, my, my husband went to transfer it, and the stereo died. So we had a little boombox. We could not get it to record right. It just kept, we just kept going with this. We finally got it to record right. 
And I said, well, I hear a crackle, so let's take it to the church and we'll check it. And I put the disc copier into the computer. Everything was sitting right there. It was nowhere near the edge of the table. And while it was burning, the thing jumped to the ground and unplugged itself and hit the floor and stopped working. And I was like, okay, either the devil's really not wanting me to share this song or God's not. So I <laughs> copied the song to my phone and it played in the car. But when we came in here, Jamie will tell you, I kid you not, it went <laughs> like that. Like there was no song. And I was like, okay. I started praying. I was like, God, I'm not supposed to do this song. What song am I supposed to do? I really wanted to minister to people. And a song came to mind and I was like, you know what? I mean, true, you know. But I said, you know, the lyrics are missing. And I said, okay, God. This is the song I'm supposed to do. Help me find the lyrics right now. I kid you not, I stuck my hand in the couch cushions and pulled out the lyric card. So, I really hope this touches someone this morning because it was a wild way of getting there. <laughs> Jesus passed by that day. Nobody saw the little woman at all. She pressed through the crowd that day. For 12 long years she suffered, but she knew down in her soul, if I can only touch his garment, God's gonna fix it, I know. God's gonna fix it, I know. I know whenever my heart is broken, or oh, whenever I'm feeling low, so I don't have to worry, for the master is in control. I just go to the problem solver, God's gonna fix it, I know. Doctor man says it's out of my hands. There's nothing more I can do. When they gather around, so defeated and down, cause your life is almost through. Think about that little woman reaching out to touch his robe. And with faith and determination, say, God's gonna fix it, I know. Thank you so much, Michelle. Appreciate that. It's always great um, to, to hear the stories behind why people do. I'm a, I'm a big why person. I just like to know why people do certain things. And uh, it's, it's great to hear those stories. And it's, it's good to have somebody else on the list that brings just a different flavor to the, the music that we sing here at church. I always like 
I, I always enjoyed that about th this church, and it's one of our selling points, is we can, you never know what kind of music you're going to get on any given Sunday. Could be blues, could be metal, could be anywhere in between. It's, it's a wonderful thing. We truly are blessed, so thank you for that. And, and that fits really well with, what, did you tell her what, what the message was about, or she just felt it? See, because that's what we're... That's what we're talking about today is just when, not so much physical things, but when things don't, aren't going the way we thought that they should go, we should go directly to God. That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So it's amazing how God just pulls all those strings and works everything together week after week. So the question that I have for you, have you ever just felt overwhelmed or bombarded? You can, you can raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have to be today, just in general, yeah, uh, right? Now, I don't know why, I don't know if it's just because of my personality or because of, well, I don't know what it is, I'm just weird, I don't normally feel that way, I normally roll through life, whatever it throws at me, and it doesn't typically bother me, but a few weeks ago, uh, I was sorting through emails, sitting at my desk, I was working on my computer, just doing things like I always do, and all of a sudden, I just felt this weight upon me. That's new for me. Some of you know exactly what that's like, uh, and I, like, it was something simple. I was just clearing out emails, but it just felt like they kept coming. They weren't. It's not like I delete one and like five more show up, but it just felt like that. Like, there was like, I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't doing anything. It felt like they just kept coming, like, like, like I wasn't getting anything accomplished. And, and the only word that could come to my mind was bombarded, which is not a word I typically use, uh, but that's just what it felt like. It's the word that came to my mind. I, I just felt like the emails and the responsibilities and the expectations and all these other things just kept coming and crashing into me like ocean waves. And, and so maybe, maybe you understand what that's like. Maybe uh, you know what I'm talking about, and if that's you, I don't mean to trigger your anxiety by sharing mine, but eh, we're all in it together, so uh, pop your Percocet and we'll be fine. So uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't do that, because uh, that's not what Percocet's for. So, uh, But this morning, we're going to work through some scriptures that we can use to help us when we feel that way. How do we take things to God when we start to feel bombarded, when we start to feel overwhelmed, when those things come at us? and we feel like we just aren't getting anywhere, we can turn to God and we can turn to these scriptures uh, to help us out. So uh, let's pray together. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the, the stories that have been shared through song. And God, we know that when things aren't going our way, we can take things directly to you. We ask that you would allow us to, to do that. We ask that you would give us a picture of what that looks like. Maybe some of us here have never even considered that or never done that before. So God, we ask that you would make it abundantly clear how we can even bring things to you. For those of us who know how to do that, we've done that before, we ask that you would encourage us, embolden us, that we could bring all of our issues, all of our overwhelmed feelings and thoughts and God, we can just bring them to you. We can search through the scriptures and find peace that can only come from you. So I ask that you would work and move through us today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I do need to preface this a little bit. I get a little neurotic about certain things. I'm, I'm a little bit strange. If you work closely with me or you've been on a trip with me, you know that that's true. I know I'm weird. You know I'm weird. We're just... I'm just putting it out there, but but some of the things that I, re and part of it is my attention deficit. The older I get, the more they, they learn about it, the more I'm like, oh, I wish somebody told me that when I was six. I just, I just assumed I was different, which I am. Um, but there are certain things like emails and tasks that like I have to complete. I have a little bit of OCD, just a tiny bit with certain things. And then like for me, it's emails. Like that's a thing for me. Like I, I know that, like, I like to clear, I like to answer my stuff and clear it. If I have to keep it, I put it in a file folder in my email. If, I, if I'm done with it, I delete it. Some of you are psychos and have 100,000 emails just sitting there. I don't know how you people exist. I don't understand it. 
my wife is one of those people. Like, she asks me sometime to get her phone, and, and like, you know how those, not- I don't like the notifications at the top either. I got to deal with them. I got to clear them out. But she's got so many, I have to scroll down, and it's like a list, and I got all this stuff, right? But so, like, some of you, like, we all have different things that trigger us. For some of you, emails, like, that you don't care. It's like, it's, I don't care. I don't have a problem with that. But we all have our things. And for me, that's, that's one of it. It's one of mine is this feeling of bombardment. Like, if I'm not clearing out my stuff, if I haven't checked my email in a couple days, and there's all these things that need to be done, that triggers me. And uh, if I try to step back, another thing is if I try to step back to get a big picture look at all the things that I need to do, like, in a year or in a month, like, it just sets me off, man. I can't do it. I got to get real small and focus on one thing at a time or else I just get stuck. I, f- I get overwhelmed and I can get paralyzed sometimes. And, like, uh, if I'm filling out a calendar for the year and I start to see that every day has something written in it, it stresses me out. I don't know if some of you are like, yeah, I have stuff to do. Awesome. But some of you are like, I need, like, one thing a month and that's your deal, right? And so, uh, I don't know. But it makes me feel like I can't breathe sometimes. And, and a few weeks ago when I was trying to sit down and write this, this that's kind of what happened. It was a combination of all of these things. I had emails to do. I just bought my new calendar from Kroger. And I'm like, got to write in all this stuff. And then January has like three empty days. And I'm like, I got the emails and I got every day to do stuff. And Lauren's going out of town, so I got to work ahead so I can stay home with the boys and do all this stuff. And it all kind of piled in at the same time. All of my triggers happened at once. And it was weird for me. And so all of these things piled up in my spirit and just made me feel overwhelmed and bombarded. And, and like I mentioned earlier, different things cause those feelings for different people. Uh, maybe tasks and emails don't bother you, but maybe for you it's people. And you're like, I have to people today, and so I can't people for like three days after that, right? But all this, but if you get like two or three things, social engagements back to back or, or too close together, maybe that's an issue for you. I like people, uh, so that doesn't bother me. But maybe maybe it's you. So like, if you realize you have multiple social engagements coming up, you get paralyzed or you feel stuck or you feel overwhelmed. And again, I don't know what it is for everyone here. And and to be honest, it's a new feeling for me. So I was like, how do I deal with this? Well, I'm going to go to the Bible because that's kind of what I do. And so what does God have to say about these kinds of feelings? What does God have to say when we feel overwhelmed by the responsibilities and the weight of the world around us? What do we do? Where should we turn? What does God have to say about it? So I, I found just a few, I found a whole bunch of stuff, but here's just a few things that I found. And then this is going to be the meat of our, of our time today. It's Psalm chapter 55, verse 22. It says, cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Say, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's very encouraging, right? Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. I found those things, and I found there are plenty more, but I didn't want to bombard you uh, with, with too many things to remember uh, at the same time. But there's a lot of stuff in there, and there's a lot of things like this that tell us to give our anxieties to God and to allow his peace to come and sit with us. And, and those are really encouraging and really helpful. And sometimes 
That's all you need. And, and I do, before we go any further, I want to make something very clear. Uh, I don't want anyone to hear these verses and feel guilty. I counsel a lot of people uh, and, and have through, through the years. And sometimes I'm a little bit nervous to approach scriptures when it comes to addictions and anxiety and depression. Because a lot of times people, especially Christian people, have heard these scriptures and they have taken them to mean pray about it and get over it. That's not what this is for. Because sometimes you can't just pray about it and get over it. It doesn't just work like that. And for some of us, maybe it does. But for a lot of us, like, it doesn't. So I'm always really nervous when I bring scriptures to people dealing with these things because maybe they've heard them used as a weapon before. Maybe they've, they've been hurt by these things. And they say, well, I'm trying to pray about it. Why am I not getting better? That's not what these are for. Okay, these scriptures are, are, are not intended to make us feel guilty and make us question ourselves, like, why can't I give my troubles to God and get over it? If you want to feel guilty or you want to feel shame, I got lots of other Bible verses about that, right? Stop sinning, you dirty heathens. There's lots of other things to be upset about, okay? I got lots of other, other passages of Scripture if you want to feel guilt or shame, but these are not those. These passages are not intended to point the finger and say, well, you just don't have enough faith. You're not trying hard enough to give your anxiety to God. Like, that's not what this is for. These are intended to be a comfort and to bring peace to us. These are for us to read, to take a moment to step back and reframe and be like, oh, yeah, God is in control. It's going to be okay. That's what these are for. These are about what God can do and not what we have to do, if that makes sense. When life comes at us a million miles an hour and, and, we, and we feel like we can't even take a minute to stop and breathe, these scriptures can help us find our breath. That's what they're supposed to do. They can help us take a minute to refocus on what really matters. Is that me or is that one of the other mics is, is still muted? It's just really crackly. Sorry. It's one of those days, right? No, see, that doesn't bother me. I can listen to crackle noises all day. For some of you, you're ready to go, right? So find peace, right? Now, again, I, I'm not saying that these scriptures are going to replace medication or therapy if anxiety or depression are things that you struggle with. Like, these are just another tool in your toolbox. I'm not saying... Pray this one prayer and your anxieties will be gone forever. You don't have to see your, your therapist anymore. That's, that's not what I'm saying. But this is just another tool in your toolbox when it comes to working through those things. But for those of us who don't usually deal with, with those kind of thoughts or feelings, maybe this is all you need to get back on track. And for me, that's, that's what it was. Like I was just like, okay, I'm going to read these scriptures. I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to pray. And I'm good. But I don't, I don't struggle with these things habitually, and some of us do, right? So, but for some of us, all you need is to, to take a breath, to read these things, and get back on track. And, and the point is that God cares about us. That's why these verses are in here. That's why this scripture has been given to us. God cares about us, not just our physical well-being. He doesn't just care that we follow all the Christian rules and do all the Christian stuff. He cares about our entire being including our, our, our mental health and our well-being. He doesn't want us to feel bombarded. He doesn't want us to feel overwhelmed. He doesn't want us to feel burnt out. And even just from a practical perspective, it's hard to go out and share the gospel if you like, feel like you can't even answer an email, right? God cares about all of those things. That's why he commands us to trust him, and he'll grant us peace. To cast our cares on him because he can handle those things even when we can't. And so as we remember those things, as we keep those in mind, I hope you wrote down those addresses. I have plenty more. If you need some, talk to me. I can email you a whole list of things. But after coming through and reading those verses and a few others and taking just a minute to stop and to pray... Uh, you know, it kind of helps me get back on track, and, and this is what worked for me. I hope this works for you. The emails can wait. Even if you don't like to have them pile up, 
they can wait. The tasks that you have to do. Again, I'm a, I'm a checklist guy. I sit down in my office every Monday, make a list of all the things I got to do, and I work through that stuff. Most of the time, those things can wait. They don't need to be done at this exact moment when you're feeling overwhelmed, like you can't even take a step forward. All that stuff can wait. And these scriptures help me to focus on the most important things. Spending time in prayer. Casting my anxieties on him. Taking a few minutes to spend time with my family instead of being stuck to my phone checking emails about, like, coupons of things I'm never even going to buy, right? Reorganizing things so that not every day of my calendar is full. Some of those things that I have control over, some of those things are, are things I need to do. Those are things I can do when I feel bombarded, and, and maybe those, those are things that can help you too. I'm not sure what God has to show you except for this. Make a habit to cast your cares on him. Even when things are good. Even when it's good things. Even when you don't feel burdened. Even when you don't feel bombarded. Even when you don't feel overwhelmed. Make a habit to go to God in prayer. Make a habit to talk to him about the things coming up. Make a habit to be with him. Because when those times of, when those moments of, of bombardment come, and they will for each of us, I thought I could outrun it, but they come for us all. When those moments come, you'll know exactly what you need to do to stop, to take a breath, and move forward. You don't have to be stuck. Make a habit. You'll already know where to turn to catch your breath. We're going to close with that. I know it's a little bit short today. That's okay. And we'll sing and close out. But let's pray together. God, we thank you that you are a God who cares about us. You're not just a taskmaster. You're not just keeping a list to check on us and make sure that we go to church today and we pray today and we read our Bible today. You're not a God who commands us to do and do and do and do and do. But you're a God who cares about us. You're a God who, who understands that sometimes we, we reach limitations and we, we just get stuck in our own minds with our own thoughts and feelings. Sometimes we let all the busyness of the world overwhelm us and, and you call us to just give all that stuff to you. We ask that you would help us to do that. Maybe some of us have made that a regular practice. and Maybe a lot of us have never even really considered that before. God, may, this, may today be the day where you reach down to us and remind us that, that you're here for us. That you want to take the burdens off of us. That you want us to give those things to you. So even now in this moment... May we hand over those things. Maybe you're carrying something with you today. So um, I know this is a little bit old school, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead us in a prayer. And if this resonates with you, just, just pray it. You don't have to pray it out loud, but just think over these things. God, we have so many cares. Maybe today I'm just feeling overwhelmed. Maybe today I feel like I've got too much uh, weighing down on me, whether it's expectations or, or, or uh, tasks that need to be done or places I need to go or things I need to do. God, we just, I just want to hand those things over to you. God, give me a moment to just catch my breath and remember that it doesn't all depend on me that it's going to be okay. So God, I ask that you would bring that peace that the scriptures talk about. I ask that you would bring that and flood into our hearts today. Maybe some of us can experience that peace that for the very first time, this peace that only comes from you. We ask that you would move however you see fit. God, as we sing, stand in just a moment and sing this song, if there's any things that are pressing on us that we want others to be praying for us, uh, God, I ask that you would encourage us to come down to the front and, and 
this church body will gather around and, and we'll, we'll pray with them. Now this time is yours. Do what you will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are willing and able, would you stand with us as we sing? This is our time. If